only as good as the team is around you. <coughs> Buford's got to score more. Let's make that clear and be part of that team. Um, but you know, it's it's a it's a really great day. And moms and dads, I hope I hope you feel good today. Do you? I hope you feel like it's working out. If somebody's not just. I've, I guess I've said it all. So um, we'll sign this little executive order, and um, and I guess we're going to have a couple more speakers. John Martin, who is the he's the man. He's the mastermind behind all of this. Give him a great round. Well, it's never good to follow the governor. He's uh, <laughs> such a great, uh, great public speaker. Um, I, I just wanted to tell a, a, a short story that I think helps understand why we're here today and, and, and why this is important. And, and the story comes from, there's a few people in this audience who would be old enough to remember uh, Mark Gold, who was one of the real pioneers in the work that we're doing here today. And Mark was from New Jersey. And he tells a story about being out late one night and eating a lot of uh, pepperoni and anchovy pizza that's fairly common in New Jersey, which is where he was from. And he got home late at night. He got home really late. He might have had a few brewskis, too. I don't know the total details of the story, but he just hopped into bed without brushing his teeth or anything, forgot to set his alarm, woke up in the morning, and realized he was already about three minutes late to get into church. And he was supposed to be the greeter in church that morning. So he jumped out of bed, he hopped in the shower, and he isn't going to have time to eat. But the one thing he knows he's, he's got to do is he's got to brush his teeth before he heads out to church. Because that garlic from the night before is just really hanging, hanging heavy. And so he opens up the cabinet and looks, and there's no toothpaste there. And he goes, holy cow, you know, he probably said something else, but he opened and, and looks around, he can't find any toothpaste. And so he looks in the trash can, and there he sees the old tube that he had thrown away the day before and forgot to replace it. Well, it was one of the, this was quite a few years ago, so it was one of the, you remember how when they used to be made of aluminum or metal or something? So he, he unwound the whole thing and rewound it back up from the beginning and, and tried to squeeze some toothpaste out of there, but nothing came out. So he quick, he quick ran downstairs and he got a pliers out of the drawer. And he took that pliers and he gripped it on there and he squeezed it with the pliers, but still couldn't get any toothpaste out of there. And so in desperation, he went into the basement and he put it in a vice grip and he cranked that baby holding his toothbrush under it and he got just enough toothpaste out that he was able to brush his teeth and head off to church. Well, the important part of that story is that the quality of that toothpaste that came out of that tube was exactly the same as the quality of toothpaste that comes out of a full brand new tube. And that the point of the story is that people are a lot like toothpaste. And that some of us have skills, abilities, like the governor. I mean, he can stand up here and he's one of those tubes that, you know, you squeeze, skills and abilities come out easy. But then there's a whole bunch of others of us who need a lot of assistance and a lot of help for those skills and those abilities to come forth. But when they come forth, and what you're seeing in this hospital and other sites around the state, what comes forth is of the same quality that comes out of the full tube. And so the reason that we're doing this Employment First initiative is that to get this toothpaste out of all these tubes, we need all of us working together. I really appreciate Stan being here. Education is a huge part of what it is we're going to be doing. And Michael from Jobs and Family Services and how their programs uh, support us as well. And Kevin, who's going to say a few words in just a second. So it's, it's important that all of us at this level are working together. But we can't do it without you all. And looking out there, see, you know, we have a lot of, of excellent county boards who play an incredible role in what we do, superintendents here today. And thank you for coming and your leadership and support of this initiative. And providers, we have provider association, a number of different providers here. We, we count on them for their support. Your friend Margie's here, I believe, uh, somewhere here in, in the audience. 
So we, we, we count on providers, county boards, and then most importantly as well, the advocates. And it's, it's the advocates who really have started and pushed us in this way. And we have, you know, the ARC here today, a number of the autism groups, etc. Folks, uh, the self-advocate groups and representatives from them who really help push us in, in this direction. So we want to thank everybody who's come together to support us in this effort, and we look forward to working with you all as, as we move forward. So I want uh, two parents just to, to say briefly, Kevin, uh, who is a parent who runs RSC, to say a few words, and then I'll introduce the final parent who will be kind of wrapping this piece up before the signature. So Kevin? Well, I'll even be more brief because uh, in the disability community, there isn't anybody who's got a greater voice than John Martin. And when John Martin speaks, people listen. And, you know, John and I had a great meeting when we first started in the administration with the governor and, you know, having a son who's autistic. I made a conscious decision several years ago after really struggling with the fact of having a son who wasn't going to play football for Ohio State. And uh, I wanted to know what could he have to offer. And as a parent, I'm sure you also think about the very first thing when you come to grips with that is, what's going to happen when I'm gone? And that seems to be at the forefront of every parent's mind. And I can tell you as a parent, I can tell you uh, the same as John Martin as a parent of a, a child with disabilities. This governor knows what it means. And when he says what he means, when you hear him today say that you have a voice, I think this speaks volumes to that. And I think with Project Search and with uh, Mr. Bloom, who has really stepped up to the plate with Ohio Health, and we have many of the individuals who are here, and you talk to many of the job coaches who say they come to work every day, they have a smile on their face, and some of the jobs that they couldn't get filled that are critical to what is going on in the hospital, like sterilization of equipment, it's in their hands. And that shows the type of, of uh, gift that you're bringing. So I'm just proud that I can serve in this administration and with John Martin and with Stan Hefner and, and uh, Director Colbert. And uh, RSC is a partner in this, and we look forward to expanding it every chance we get. So thank you.